What's up, guys, and welcome back to the channel. So this past weekend, I headed out to America's Kansas for the Flint Hills Gravel Ride. This is my third year participating in this event, and I love this event because of the small town vibes. You pull into Americas, which is like right outside of Emporia, and you just get that small town feel. So the expo for this event is actually located next to this bar called Harry and Lloyd's, which I gotta point out, the vibe at this bar is incredible. People are hanging out, they're having a good time, uh, drinking some beers, listening to music. So you can kind of check out this expo. Can Two Wheels is there. They've got some other uh, vendors there. You can get your race number, which by the way, I love the race numbers for this event. The last two years, they've been a picture of a cow, and how good is that? A picture of a cow on a race number for a grassroots gravel event. Hi, Dad. How are you? Ran into Amanda Nauman, who is a two-time dirty Kanza 200 champion and as you heard she remembered my name I have officially made it so pretty cool to see her at this event. I saw Bobby Thompson. He's the guy that makes this event happen. He's kind of a gravel OG and super passionate about putting on these races, and I really appreciate him for it. This race also has a nice little swag bag, and who doesn't like free stuff? You get a bottle, some chamois butter, some chain lube. Ran into Daryl from Speedy Hornet Legs. He was like, Ty, what's up, dude? I got something for you. So he hooked me up with a Speedy Hornet Legs mug, so thank you for that, Daryl. I love it. After getting the swag bag, they did a 15 mile shakeout ride that left from behind the bar and then after the shakeout ride they had an all-you-can-eat spaghetti dinner for ten dollars at the bar and I really appreciated this because I didn't have to plan for food I didn't have to sit down and think about what I wanted to order so this was just really convenient so I enjoyed some spaghetti fueled up for the next day and then made my way to base camp Flint Hills it was a beautiful night out at base camp Flint Hills they had a fire pit we kind of hung out had a couple laughs and then basically just got ready for 88 big gravel miles the next day. I was rolling to the start and forgot to put my damn number on. Check out the wear on this tire right now. I like to live dangerously. The Flint Hills Gravel Challenge is the challenge. Here. Challenge route. I got my boy Eric yeah. here again. I feel like every year this thing is broke. I mean, I'm looking behind me right now. I can't like, last year this was like the back. And it just keeps going and going. Look at this. The goal for me today, kind of keep the heart rate under control to start, kind of race my pace. Last weekend I kind of blew up at the start and it plagued me for the rest of the day. A uh, little bridge here. Alright, look at this. Uh, today I'm going to just try to have fun. It's going to be uh, favorable winds to start, and then the second half is going to be some nasty, nasty headwinds coming back to America. So. While I'm gone. Casey, what up, Playboy? What's up, I'll be back to fan the flame. It won't be long. Just a while, then I'm back to live alone. The whole fire burning while I'm. The hill we just bombed down, right here. There's a lake at the bottom of it. 2000, I think it was 18, Dirty Cans at 200. I'm at like mile 180. It's hot as hell. About 20 something miles left. I come up on this lake right here. There's people out on their boats. They're drinking, they're swimming, they're skiing. They're having a good time. All I wanted to do was be off this bike and in that lake drinking a beer. first minimum maintenance road and if this is a Bobby Thompson ride which it is you can bet your hiney this won't be the last I 35 with a top down quit to tell a hater they should get like me seem like everybody want to be the boss but it costs and these lanes ain't like me drop a couple bands on the crypto fans no hey Conrad's 12 years old he's crushing it Tell him what it is. What? Tell him I'm a grown man, so you'll never fool me with the cat you'll be selling to the key. Hey, shout out to all the volunteers and the uh, the people out on course taking pictures, just everyone that helps out with putting these races on because it definitely takes a lot of people to make these things happen. That guy had on chaps, like old school bull riding chaps. There's some real ass cowboys out here in the foothills. Color like gray. 
I thought I heard a diesel truck out here. I should have known it was just Preacher Bailey. Single speeding, huh? Oh, dude. Sick son of a bitch. Baby, children of the sun, why these so shady? Boss talk with the wolf pack. I ain't never looked back. Got a couple bands and I flipped it. I be chilling with my shorty. Got the crib. Oh, sure. Karate keep up, little baby. I'm pretty sure I got that on film. I may have to zoom in, but I think I, I think I got it. All right, Jason. Hey, what do you think of these grassroots events? Oh, they're the best. Better go to these than Unbound. So, Unbound is kind of, you hear, you hear the Flint Hills, and people automatically associate that with Unbound. But we're in the Flint Hills right now, baby, and this race was a fraction of the price. Way better. I would rather come here. And I'm, and I'm not saying, hey, Unbound is a special, special event, but some of these, grassroots events near Emporia. Uh, just the atmosphere, the party before the race, the party after, it's just really well done. So along with this event, Bobby Thompson's got a handful of other grassroots gravel races that he calls Discover Gravel. It's a little series he put together. All grassroots races, I'm sure they're all very well done. So if you like gravel, do yourself a favor and check out Discover Gravel. So around mile 55 at the last aid station, the winds had really started to pick up. I mean, as cyclists, you know, we all deal with headwinds and crosswinds. It's just kind of part of the deal. But these winds were different. I mean, they were obnoxious. We're talking like 30 to 40 mile an hour winds. So the crosswinds had already started to kind of take their effect. So by the time I got to that aid station, I was pretty smoked. I got a Coke and some food, and that kind of brought me back to life. I got back on the bike and immediately had a flat. So I'm cheap. It's my own dumb fault. I knew that the tire probably needed to be replaced, especially with riding in the Flint Hills. And, you know, throughout the day, I saw a ton of flat tires. And it's kind of just the way it works when you're riding in the Flint Hills. I mean, that rock is sharp, and it's going to happen. So I plugged the tire, was on my way. So as soon as we turned to go back towards the start of the race, there was probably another 30-ish miles left. And the majority of that 30 miles was into a nasty, nasty headwind. And I don't know what's worse, riding in a headwind or riding into a nasty crosswind. Because with the crosswinds, they were so strong that there were times that I actually felt like I was going to get pushed off my bike. So that kind of made it difficult. There was one point we turned on to, I think it's called the Flint Hills Nature Trail, which is basically a chat rock trail. And if you've ever been in a gravel race that's tough with some chunky gravel, you love those sections of tarmac that are just smooth. And this wasn't quite as smooth as that, but it was still pretty nice. So kind of a little bit of a break from the chunky stuff. And then, of course, there was more headwinds. So then towards the end of this race, it's like, dude, just finish, just push through, get to the finish line. finish. Kim says they're gross and it's just chocolate water. I say they're delicious and they're good for recovery. Mm. We're out here at Base Camp Flint Hills right now. Darius is over there uh, getting a little fire ready for some cooking and everyone's just kind of making party. But either way, guys, I appreciate you checking out the video. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed to the channel yet, hit that subscribe button. Hey, and until next time, keep, keep crushing it. it! Hold the phone here. You <laughs> baked a cake in a Dutch oven? It's brownies. Well, you baked perfect. brownies in an outdoor oven over there? Yeah. You actually did that? Yeah. This is blowing my mind right now. Ty, you should see my dump cake. It's even better. So you're like an accomplished baker. <laughs> in a Dutch oven, baby. Dude, and, and you got second in the 30 mile route today. Let's go. This is harder.
<laughs> Maybe. I gotta try these brownies. Darius, are they good? Oh yeah. They're just glued to the roof of your mouth. It'll, it'll take this one there. At the edge. <laughs> Bro. What? Um, you want to know the secret? What? Yes. Ghirardelli's brownie mix from Costco. Ghirardelli's brownie mix. He made this in the outdoor Dutch oven right now. What?